Hi there, Chris Holbrook here. I'm going to show you around the features of Wirecat 8. We're pretty proud of this. We've spent a lot of years getting it together. Let me talk about the concept for just a second. In Wirecad, we have three distinct environments that are available to you. We have the drawing environment, which uses the DWG file format. We have the data environment, presenting your data in grid form. The databases can be any one of three different types of database, SQL Server, Vista DB, which is a nice little file-based database, or SQL Azure, cloud-based storage. We also have a reporting environment for you where your data can be presented in pretty form, laid up for paper and ready to go. At any given time in Wirecat, we have two databases running. We have our global database, which would be common to all projects, and therein we want to maintain only information that we want to type once. Manufacturer names, equipment names, inputs and outputs for devices, connectors and signal types, those things qualify as things we'd only ever want to type once, so we'll keep those in the global equipment database. While Wirecad has CAD in the name, we try and hide as much actual CAD work from you as possible because we realize that that defocuses you from your work as a designer. So, rather than you having to make a CAD decision as to whether or not or how you might draft this particular functional block for this diagram, we use our equipment library to generate this object automatically. The equipment library is a database of equipment definitions. Who makes the device, what it's called, and what are its I.O. We also host a community server where Wirecad users have contributed over 80,000 device definitions. To create an object that we'll place in a drawing, we come into the equipment library and we find the device that we're interested in. We select that and then we select the I.O. that we might like to display in this particular version of the, of the drawing. We don't have to display all I.O. at all times. Though the port definition set may contain them all, we simply just select the ones that we want to include in this drawing. Then we go to the Display Preferences tab and set up how we might like this block to display. We can adjust body colors and widths and pen widths and pin spacings and all types of parameters around the display of this block. Once we're happy with it, we add it to the drawing. Wirecad then creates the actual CAD object. We place that in the drawing and we're given the opportunity to place multiples. Once we've got items in the drawing, we need to cable those things together. So we go to the Draw Cables tool panel here, and we select the cable relationship that we'd like to create. Here I'll simply do a one-to-one -one cable, and I'll start drawing the cable, selecting the output that I'm interested in, followed by the input. You'll notice that the cable is routed automatically for you, and you're warned if you mismatch a signal type. If you don't like the way the cable's routed, you can simply grab one of the grips on the polyline and place the cable wherever you'd like it. Sometimes it's difficult to get things exactly right and Wirecat has a function available to the cables called tidy cable. This will make this cable orthogonal and clean things up. Wires in Wirecat are sticky. If you decide you need to move an object in the drawing, simply grab it by its grip and move it. Wirecat will keep all of the cables attached to that device. Wirecat also provides support for on-sheet, off-sheet pointers or sheet references. Some people refer to these as feathers as well. Once linked, pointers can be traversed in Wirecad simply by control double-clicking a pointer. I'll control double-click this pointer here. This will take me over to the test one drawing and show me the other end of the pointer to which we're linked. And again, working the other way works as well, so I'll control double-click that and that will take me back to the source pointer. Linking pointers in Wirecat is very easy. We simply start on the source side and we double click the pointer. We're prompted for the other end of the pointer. Here I'll select one that's over on test one. I'm switched to the test one drawing and given a stripey string to drag out and say connect those two pointers together. All of the pointer information is then filled in for us 
based on the source and the destination information coming out of the blocks to which we're attached. Wirecat also has support for adapters and for splice points. Oftentimes a splice point is made where we want to butt two cables together or we want to have an interface of two cables. They're not always things that we need to track in our equipment list. So Wirecad splice points don't have to be tracked. If you simply name them splice or it contains the name splice, then that particular item won't be tracked in the overall equipment list. Double click the item to name it and give it a port name and type and connector types. That information will then go into the cables database as we assign cables. Adapters are handled in a similar fashion. Here we'll draw an adapter here out of this uh, SDI BNC port here. And I'll, I'll use this one here. I'll take this adapter and I'll place that on that port. Wirecad pulls the information out of the block on which I've, I've landed this adapter and then it prompts me. It says we're adapting from a BNC to what? So here I'll select some other connector type out of my global connector types list. And I'll click OK. Wirecat will then fill in that information and now that's got all the information that I need to attach a cable and have that cable enter into the cables database. Naming devices and numbering cables is very easy. We simply double click devices. Wirecad will suggest the next number for us based on our project rules. Once we accept that, the information is updated in the corresponding CAD object and the project databases. The databases in Wirecad present your underlying data in grid form. Where you can edit, these databases are bidirectional, so any edits made within the data grid will also update the, the project drawing set. That makes bulk edits very easy. Applying cable numbers is as easy as double clicking a cable and accepting the default data that comes through. Wirecad will then update the underlying database as well as the information that's in the drawing. Here's a quick look at the cables database. Several of the grids in Wirecad have visualization tools that let you see your data in a different form. Here I'll select a number of records in my cables database and then I will visualize those records as a ladder diagram. Each vertical line in my ladder diagram represents a location in the project. Each horizontal line represents a cable. These visualizations can be exported to any number of formats including DWG and PDF as well as image formats. You can also copy this data to the clipboard and paste it into any live drawing. All data in the data grids can be exported to any number of formats, including Excel and XML. But if you'd like to format that data, say, into a cable label, then you'll need to use a report. Wirecad has a built-in reporting engine. And here we're viewing a Brady cable label, where we've laid this label up to show the cable number and the source and the destination for that particular cable. We can also print cable run sheets, bills of material, power consumption and heat load reports, and many, many more custom reports. Wirecat also has an integrated cable data selector. Rather than having to apply some complex filter to select a specific cable, you can simply open the cable data selector tab and select the cable records that you want to print. You can also set the number of copies and pad empty records. If you happen to be printing to a label sheet where you've already used some of your labels. If you're not partial to a design but it's close to what you want to use, simply open the report designer and modify that report design so that it suits your needs. Wirecat has a set of tools to generate our rack layouts from our project data. Now how did we get the project data? In the case of this project we created the functional block diagrams first we took our guess, our best guess, as to where that item might reside in our rack, but we knew that we might be wrong. That's okay. Wirecad then generated our guesses for us, and it allows us then to move things around in these rack layouts. 
these moves are location aware. So as I move things around, Wirecad detects the loca location change, and then it updates the databases and the corresponding project drawings. If we make sweeping changes in our project, we may need to remove all of the entities from this drawing and rerun the Rack Builder tool again in order to rebuild it with the new project data. Wirecad also comes with a set of tools in the plan view space. Oftentimes we find ourselves needing to count items in the drawing that somebody else has created for us. Wirecad has a takeoffs tool that allows us to generate lists of information based on the entities that are in the drawing space. I can count inserts or individual entities and I can also filter them by layer. Here I'll count all of the, the inserts that are in the drawing and then I'll list them and then I'll count them. This is handy if the designer of the drawing has actually used CAD blocks so that they can identify the individual items. But sometimes they don't. And sometimes a designer might say, for example, use circles to represent, say, ceiling speakers. And they might put those uh, circles on a specific layer, at which point we can say, count all of the circles on the ceiling speaker layer. And here we can see in this particular drawing that there are 32 circles on the ceiling speaker layer. These grids again can be exported as can any grid in Wirecad. But this data can be useful in your bidding process and can save you a lot of time. Wirecad also has tools where you can define location boundaries within the drawing space and those location boundaries can then be used to feed the rest of the Wirecad process. You can draw cables. Cables can be either attached to location boundaries or equipment within boundaries and cables can be drawn in such a manner that they're not attached to anything at this point. We just know that coming from onto this particular area we have some cables. There's a new plan view tool panel within Wirecad that presents plan view objects that can be placed in the plan view space. They can be named and numbered and associated database entries can be maintained. Wirecad has a set of tools that can create drawings from pure data. In the case of this project, our data came into the project databases as a result of creating other functional block diagrams. Those diagrams were split up by signal type. Here I'd like to create an overall all systems view of my systems or equipment in the edit one facility. So I've used the auto block auto scheme tool to position blocks around the drawing and here I'll use the rat's nest tool within Wirecad to wire those blocks together based on the way they're wired together in the database and other drawings. There's my rat's nest of the data pulled from the database now I can move things around in the drawing. I have sticky wires and as I move them the wires will be routed automatically or I can simply click the clean up button and Wirecad will apply the auto router to all the cables in the drawing for me. Wirecad also comes with a built-in PDF viewer. Any PDF file placed in the project folder will be enumerated in the project explorer when you double click on them here they'll be launched into and loaded into the Wirecad PDF viewer where you can view and print them. That's a quick look at some of the features that are available in Wirecad Aid. There are many more that we haven't discussed here and I encourage you to download Wirecad Aid and give it a try. Please feel free to give us a call or send us an email at sales at wirecad.com. We're here to help you in your design endeavor and we hope you enjoy the product. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this.